This video is brought to you by my website, aeroparts.com, high quality, genuine parts. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the engine mounts in a 2008 Ford F-150 four-wheel drive. Now this has the 4.6 liter V8. If you have the 5.4, this job is very similar actually. The throttle body on the 5.4 needs to be removed as you jack your engine up. Otherwise, the 5.4 is going to be very similar to the 4.6 engine. Now, of course, there's going to be a number of tools that you'll need to do this job. For somebody who works on cars often, this is definitely doable. If you don't work on cars very often, I would set aside an entire day, maybe even longer to do it, because some of these bolts can be tough, especially the 24 millimeter for the left engine mount. Now, this is a recommendation that I don't typically do. It's just a recommendation, but I do highly recommend getting an impact wrench. If you don't already have a half inch electric impact wrench, that has at least 400 foot pounds of braking torque or more. Milwaukee is probably one of the best brands out there. I use Makita, but if you're looking for a more budget brand in the hundred and something dollar range that would get the job done, Harbor Freight has some great half inch electric impact options that I would look into. I have wrenched for years without one and they were a lot more expensive when I was younger. But these days there are a whole lot more options available. So I would look for something that's got 400 foot pounds or more of braking torque it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Trust me on this one. I don't typically make these type of recommendations when I'm making how-to videos, but on this one, I'm gonna make that recommendation. If you don't have one, get one. Now I've done quite a bit of engine mounts in the past, and this was the first one where I ended up bending the oil pan, because I tried to see if I could do this without removing the cross member, and that was a big mistake. So there's gonna be a bonus video. And that's gonna be replacing the oil pan. Now a bad engine mount symptom on this type of truck is very obvious. I'm going to show you what it was doing before and how it's supposed to behave after we fixed it. You can see what an enormous difference now this is what the engine mounts look like when they came off and this is just totally expected they were very old and they have been there for quite a while now this is how I supported the truck I jacked it up from the frame rail and supported it with my jack stands on the frame rail as well in that position I was using six ton Daytona jack stands two of them now I'm going to admit I wasn't very detailed on a lot of the stuff on the top. Some of it is very simple. You're just removing these items out of the way so as you lift your engine up they don't bind or run into anything. The three items in particular are one, the radiator fan shroud. It's going to be loosened, not removed, so it can move with the engine as it goes up. The second one is the EGR valve. It's going to be removed. And the third one is going to be the power steering fluid reservoir. That's going to be removed. That's held on with some 8mm bolts. Seven millimeter. Take this EGR. Now the EGR bolts are 10 millimeter. I would consider carefully using heat on them or spraying them with some sort of penetrating oil overnight. And off comes that EGR valve, just scooting it out of the way so it doesn't interfere with the wiper cowl. That also has a metal gasket, which I reuse. You can choose to replace it as well, but this one is reusable because it's in good condition. Steering reservoir is off and there's no more tension on that hose down here. So we now once everything up top is taken care of, I'm gonna start working on everything underneath. That shield needs to be removed. And here is a view of that left engine mount. I'm gonna freeze frame it and go over everything that you need to remove here. We have the 24 millimeter big bolt, the 12 millimeter 12 point bolt for the axle, 13 millimeter bolt for the engine mount plate. There's another one, there's three of them in total. And there's the lower cross member that's gonna be removed. And the sway bar should be removed. It's optional, but it just makes it easier and it's not hard to get it off. Now let's move up closer and watch that hidden bolt behind the left hand engine mount. You really got to stick your camera up here. You can't see this bolt before the engine gets lifted. It's really hard to see this one, but that's the hidden one. 
As soon as you lift that engine up, we can get that bolt out. The cross member, the oil pan, the cross member's got to come out, and you'll see how I messed up. I tried to lift the engine without removing the cross member on the very corner of the oil pan, and you'll see how ridiculous of an idea it was. I should have known. I know you can make fun of me all you want in the comments, but lesson learned. And just a quick heads up on this one. And now here are the bolts for the sway bar. You can remove the one 18 millimeter from the bottom, or you can remove the 13 millimeter on the top. Each way works. It doesn't matter. You can, however you choose to do it, it's really not too difficult to remove. It doesn't take very long at all, and it gives you more room. But it is optional. You can leave it if you want. Here's the location of the starter. It's on the right hand side. Just showing you that these 21 millimeter bolts for the right hand engine mount must come out before you lift the engine up. So even if you're working on the left hand mount, you have to remove those lower bolts for the right hand mount so you can get that engine lifted. Now we're going to get that metal plate off. If I remember correctly, these were 14 millimeter bolts. There's only four of them. Front. By the way, safety goggles are definitely recommended here, as you can see. No pun intended. And the crappy socket it really isn't that much. Came right off. I can get it out of the way, and I gotta remove this sway bar next. Look at all that room that we got now. Four millimeter. Okay, I was able to just get it on there without any extension. I loosen it. It's coming. Okay, finally got it. Big old bolt, and it had some Loctite on it too. For the truck, differential front. Now here is how I accessed the hidden bolts from the left-hand engine mount. It's near the differential. You can actually stick your tools up around it and get to it. I'll show you in just a moment. But you can see the location of them right here. This is one way to do it, but I did it a different way. Yeah, I felt it was a little bit easier. And I'll show you in just a moment as well. Also, you've probably caught a glimpse of my awful oil pan and jack block of wood position here, which I don't recommend. Remember, remove your cross member and support the oil pan on the larger flat part, not where you see it supported here. You'll see how I moved it later on. And here is how I was able to just stick my ratchet up there and remove those bolts. You have enough room once you jack the engine up after the 24mm bolt is removed. And I'm going to show you one more angle of the same thing, but before I do that, I'm going to loosen the transmission mount bolt because I need to be able to lift the engine a little bit more. Loosening these bolts allow me to do that. don't know if you noticed that, but the whole drivetrain shifted a little bit. Now the plate is still oh, yeah. bolted to the engine. This engine mount is just completely broken. It's not supposed to be moving like this. So yeah, that's why we're replacing it. Let's get that. And here is the last angle of the 13 millimeter bolt. I'm able to maneuver it around the front differential and I can get it in there no problem once the engine has been jacked up. One good reference for where to put it is next to the oil filter. It is still a tight spot. But you can get it from here. Get in there, and that's how it's coming out. Okay, we're back again. I'm going to show you the dipstick. Now the dipstick is held on with an eight millimeter bolt. I'm going to kind of move through this quickly, but the dipstick 
is a little bit of a pain to maneuver out. I did have a little bit of trouble with it, but it can be maneuvered out and back in. But it is a little bit of a pain. So I'll go over that in just a moment. Once the dipstick tube is out of the way, you can maneuver your engine mount out. Now some people say you can't get it out without removing the manifold and the exhaust. Well, watch me do it. It's a tight space. You're not just gonna walk this thing out of there like you're strolling through the park on a sunny day. However, if you have to remove another component, go for it. There's nothing wrong with it. The stubborn guys in the trade love to bash each other on this one. You got the guys that are like, you didn't have to take all that off. And then you got the other guys that are like, you can't do it that way. There's not even possible. Look, as long as it gets done properly and you're not overcharging your customer, that's what matters. See this engine mount is completely done nothing holding it together so now the new engine mount is ready to go back in Now the new engine mount was a little bit taller obviously because it wasn't sagging like the old one and I had to raise the engine just a little bit. Now it took me probably another solid 5 minutes of fiddling around with this thing but I was able to get it in so I fast forwarded through most of it. I'm going to show you that yes it does go in. Now before you bolt that engine mount plate up, put your dipstick tube back in because if you bolt your engine mount plate up first, you won't be able to get the dipstick in. That dipstick is going to be another fight to be honest with you. It would actually be helpful if you had two people here. I did it by myself, but a second person probably would have helped immensely here. It did take quite a while before I was even able to maneuver it into this position that you see here. So all I can recommend for you is to just be patient with the dipstick. It's a pretty simple deal, but it can be a little bit frustrating. So just put your patience hat on when you do this. Don't fight it. You, to, you know, you can get it, but uh, with some time. Now I'm going to remove the starter because I'm going to start on the right hand mount. The starter is in the way. The battery's got to be disconnected. That's mandatory. Negative terminal comes off first. And when you put it back together, the negative terminal goes on last. One bolt here. Put it there. Up here. So the starter is supposed to have three bolts. There's one missing. So somebody apparently gave up on this one. That's the hardest one to get too, so I'll show you how to get that one out. And I had a spare bolt. The threads for this are 8 by 1.25 metric. Now here's another view of that. I'm viewing this from the passenger side wheel well. You can access that bolt from that side. It is still tight though, but I'll show you how I did it shortly. I'm assuming the one that should be is a 13. The power wire is also 13, and that little guy A 10 millimeter. And this one over here, same thing. Can't really get it like this. We actually even go to reach it. Just things to consider. Cable out of the way, 13. The starter doesn't have the, the top bolt. Yeah, all right.
All right, now that I got it off, here's bolt one. That's some good leverage. I can actually break it through like this. This is how I'm gonna do it. I'm going from here to here. Here are those bolts. Quite well accessible, actually. Well, now here are these bolts for the passenger side engine mount. They're still I'll show you them up close. And that's those bolts up close. You can fit your ratchet in here actually. You will have to utilize an extension. Maybe a wobbler socket, but you can reach them from here just like this. Now once you remove those three engine mount plate bolts, you can start removing the engine mount. Studs down there stopping it. It's going to be the same process as the driver's side. This has the two studs on the bottom, so you'll just have to turn it like this and get it out. This took me a little while, so of course fast forward again. I guess I could skip past it, but I don't like to skip all of these type of little details like this, like maneuvering the engine mount out. But I will fast forward because I'm not going to bother you with all of the boring stuff. She ended up getting out like this. And yeah, she's out. <laughs> Actually, let's get to it. New mount. Now you're almost done with this job. There's not much special putting this in. I'll just kind of show you the way I've maneuvered it. But I'm going to fast forward again because it's going to take you a little bit to maneuver in the place but once you get it in it's going to be the same thing as the left side you're going to put it together the only thing i didn't record was dropping the engine back down with both of the new mounts once you have the new mount into position bolt the mount and the plate to the block first and then you can slowly drop your jack initially they won't go right into place you will have to move the engine back and forth you can move the handle of your jack carefully carefully is the keyword and use a pry bar kind of pry the engine a little bit find any place that's not going to damage anything and just get those studs in to drop in the place and for the left mount you're going to want to get that 24 millimeter bolt through you may have to hammer it a little bit to get it in the place but you will have to move things around and adjust them to get it in place but once that's done you get that bolt in 24 millimeter on the left side you put your starter back in you put the two lower 21 millimeter bolts for the right mount and you just start tightening everything up you're going to be finishing up with this job you're finally done and i found another one it's m8 by 1.25 And this is how I installed that bolt that was missing through the wheel well. I'm going to back the camera out and move it back in and you can see where that ratchet is. I'm using and a quarter inch. The other ones back on. The only combo that will get the combo. 13 millimeter and a quarter inch. It's the only thing that will get it back on. to have a little ground wire. And once you've got that on, you're just gonna start putting the rest of it back together. Your cross member, sway bar, your axle, and everything up top will all go back together. I put a little bit of red Loctite on the axle bolts, just a little bit, and we're gonna put it all back together. is it make sure to start it up and take it for a test drive if this video helped you out make sure to hit like if you want to see more content on this truck such as the oil pan video make sure to subscribe because it's going to be coming in about a week and don't forget if you're looking for high quality genuine parts make sure to check out aeroparts.com